Today we're installing a glorified box with a piece of reflective glass on the front. No, that's too boring. You gotta say with energy. Try, try again. Today we're installing a glorified box with a piece of reflective no, glass. No, that sounds forced. Try again, just sound normal. Today we're installing a medicine cabinet mirror. There you go. There is a new company in the LED mirror and medicine cabinet space, and they sent us a free product. That they wanted us to check out and see what we thought. So it came, and this is it. We're gonna open it up and see what we think of everything, really. So, so far the first thing that I noticed when I popped this open was just that it is extremely well packaged. I've had some issues with packaging lately, and they really do a good job uh, with protecting this. It's got these metal brackets around the outside, the corners from getting damaged, a lot of high quality foam. It's not just styrofoam that breaks really easily and leaves stuff everywhere. It's just uh, really well packaged. And there it is, it's a wider mirror medicine cabinet. It's got these two doors and they open like so. We've got some additional features on the inside of this one. So uh, we will um, pop this guy out, get it all installed, and see how it works, see what we think. Welcome to the bathroom. We are installing it right here. And as you can see, we can stick our hand through the wall because we have to do some work on the other side. And uh, no worry about that because it doesn't matter. But anyways, so these are the tools we need. We're gonna need a level, we're gonna need some shims, we're gonna need a tape measure, a drill, impact driver, screwdriver most likely, and a buzzer tool or a multi-tool. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we just measured everything out to make sure that it's gonna fit in the hole that we have. You know, we're gonna test it, test fit it, make sure it fits really well, see what we need to do as far as uh, raising it up or lowering it, we're gonna use shims to do that. And we can also use the shims to level it out if it's not quite level sitting flat on the sill. So that's what we're doing right now. Let's shove it in the hole. Oh my god. So as you can see here, we have our drywall opening here. Uh, we want our unit to actually sit pretty flush. The drywall is a little bit bowed. So we're gonna try to split the difference and just make sure that we are not having the unit too recessed into the wall. We want it to sit flush so that the doors are not impeded by the wall itself. Just so it ends up being a really nice result. Up top, you can see we have a little more space. So we're going to try to put some shims in the bottom to raise it up slightly so that we can get it a little bit, the difference split between the top and the bottom. Um, same thing with the left and right, we'll make sure it's sitting center. Um, as you can see here, we've got some shelving, tall shelving on the right side. We've got a little beauty mirror here. Some hooks to hang things on. We've got some pockets to put some things to uh, just uh, cosme cosmetics and whatnot. So overall, I'm really impressed with this so far. It's got also um, soft close feature hinges. Do that again. Do that again. Yep. And obviously these things are just protected. We're gonna keep them on until we're done the installation and we'll pull that off as well as the protective coating on the mirror. But um, we'll go ahead and get some shims in there to try to level this out and then screw it into the wall. Right, so the reason we removed that screw is because it'll allow us to put this one to anchor the whole unit into the wall without having to create another hole to look dumb. So whenever you can, use an existing hole in a spot that is uh, inconspicuous.
So that is a very nice looking mirror. Okay, so we have it in the wall here. It is anchored fully, and I am very pleased with how this turned out. Um, one thing that I noticed about this unit as opposed to some of the other, other units that I've installed is that these panels for the mirror are only about a quarter inch taller uh, than the actual unit. Um, so it doesn't help us to cover the gap that we have at the top and the left side. Um, sometimes it's nice for the actual mirror panel to be a little oversized, uh, then more oversized than the box itself so that it can hide those gaps uh, for us. Obviously we're going to do a little bit of work on that and one of the things that we're not going to do in this video but will happen to this um, before it's all finished is there are going to be some spackling done and some caulking done just so that these lines can be um, totally sealed up, that there will be no gaps. Um, when we open this unit, we've got um, a mirror here. As you can tell, when you pull it down, it kind of makes no well. Oh wow! Kind of makes some noise, um, but when you push it up, it's not as noisy. But yeah, we are big fans of this. It has a really good build quality. I don't think I have any issues whatsoever over the years using this. Um, occasionally, with these types of mirrors, the doors will actually start to sag. And the nice thing about this unit is it came with an adjustable hinge. So you'll actually be able to adjust that if it ever does need, you know, some touch up. Um, but can't get much better than that. So another thing we noticed with this is that this mirror specifically uh, has to be positioned so that it goes into that bay when you close it. Um, if it's off, so here, when you close it, it closes flush when it's in between those two boards. But when you move it up, let's say it's not quite, it will not close all the way. It'll actually hang up right about there and it sticks out. I imagine maybe if you, no, if you move it up, it might not work. Let's see that. Okay, so you do have a couple of different positions, but um, that's just something that I think maybe a little bit of an oversight. It looks like it can only be positioned so that it recesses into this one and this one. Um, and if not, it will not close properly. 